Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Craftsmanship. My name's Dustin, and today in the shop we're gonna be doing an unboxing video. Now, I have been a hobby knife maker and leather worker for quite a few years now, uh, and the one thing that I never really like about leather working is the hand stitching. Now I do it and it works fine, and I'd like to make leather sheaths for my knives, but it's not my favorite part of leather working. So I've been looking into buying a leather sewing machine off and on for the last few years, and the problem with that is that everything is so expensive. You know, you're looking at probably spending $1,200 to $17 to $2,000 on a good sewing machine. And you could get a cheaper version, which might work, but it's still going to be upwards of seven dollars or $800. And that's just more money than I want to invest as a hobby leather worker. Uh, so I've been looking around, and a couple years ago, I saw Big Dog Forge did a video about a Chinese leather sewing machine that he got online for $115. And then more recently, I saw Chris Epp and Make Everything channel. He also did a review of the $115 sewing machine. And so I did some more research and looked around and I got really excited. It seems like it's a pretty good machine for what it needs to be. So I got one online. I picked it up uh, for about $95 on Amazon. So I'm excited now to test it out. I mean, to see if the amount of money that I spent, the $95, if that was worth it for a cheap Chinese sewing machine. I'm excited. I think it will be. So let's go ahead and open it up. We'll put it together and we'll test it out. Hardware bits, we don't lose them. Looks like it's mostly intact, which is nice. They have some, that's funny, they actually have some pieces of leather there. Oh, there's some more hardware. That's funny, it's already there. All right. This, it's looking a little junky right now, but maybe that's just how it comes. There's a piece of leather that's already on there, which is kind of odd. There's a, oh, it's the bobbins. They just wired them in. That's cool. Okay, well, that's actually good. So they gave me the bobbins. It's kind of, uh, I don't know. We'll see. Not sold yet. Well, this is nice. This is real heavy. Came with a free screwdriver. Always love that, free tool. And uh, maybe I'll put a hole in the back of it and leave it on it if it's something that needs to be there. I'll have to figure out where this piece goes. Ooh, nice. That's what I was looking for. Came with uh, needles, that's good. All right, this can come off. Looks like what is left is just the stand, which I probably won't end up using, but good to have. Put that away. There we go. Shoe mending machine operation instructions. It's good to have. I was worried for a second there weren't any uh, instructions. We'll see. I mean, most of it looks like it's put together, but at least how to like how to thread it. I mean, I've thread sewing machines before, but this is obviously a little different. Well, I have these legs, and again, I'm not like sold if I'm actually gonna leave them on or not, but I figure we'll put them on, check it out, and see how it looks. I'm missing my little bolt and nut, and that's some of the uh, random hardware that was inside the box. Two different heights just in case you want to add that extra three quarters of an inch. It's a pretty big difference. to the longer hole in this one. We'll see if that half inch actually makes a difference or three quarters of an inch. Maybe it does. Let's see, let's go here. Yeah, there we 
we go. I think that, if I'm correct, is hold the thread. Well, this is definitely uh, not where they spent the money on this sewing machine, because this thing is very rickety. It's not level, even if I wanted to use it, if I got this up on here, I mean, you can see it's, yeah, definitely not, not, uh, not something I want to do. So let's grab a piece of wood and we'll make a base for it. pulled out this just scrap piece of pine that I have. Uh, so I'll build a base for this. I'll probably center this. Maybe I'll center the arm so this is in the center uh, and go mostly to the back. We'll put a little piece of wood underneath just to brace the middle uh, and then trim it to the length. It should be pretty easy. And I have the bolts that are in the stand. So I'll use those to attach this to the base. Get a quick measurement once that's flat, and then we'll cut a small block of wood to fit under here. Looks like we're looking at a block that's an inch and a quarter. Check that. Maybe that. We'll use that, trim that down. That'll work perfectly. use these existing bolts, but I'm going to drill these holes for the size of the bolt and then I'll countersink on the opposite side so that way they don't sit, they'll sit up underneath so the base of this will sit flat. Yeah, we'll go a quarter inch.
Perfect. Nice. Hmm. All right, I'm a little bit out of order. This wheel needs to go and fit onto here, which you can tell now it's a little bit big because I need to cut away a space for that. So I need to trim off this so that way I can actually turn this wheel. And I've also realized that we have this moving part here and also this part here that moves the arm. And that's what goes into these grooves in the wheel. So they need to line up. But first thing I need to do is remove these bolts and then cut out some wood so I can attach the wheel. foot. That's super cool. All right. All right. I like the height that the two by four, I have these two little pieces of two by four underneath just to kind of get a feeling of how tall I want it. And that seems just about perfect. I don't think I need any taller than that. I don't want it any taller than that. So I'm going to cut a couple of chunks of the two by four and I'll screw them on the bottom, maybe down from up top, build that platform up a little taller. Should be oiled every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shoes. No machine better understanding the machine safety average. Blah, 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 blah. 18, 110. That's good to know. We have this thread, the machine came pre-threaded with this, just this broken piece, which is really nice because it shows you how to work through. Now, this will come from the spool, it kind of runs down here through the main arm and around a tensioner here. I don't see this tensioner on the diagram, so I think this might just be an extra tensioner. Right now it's running through there, goes through a little guide here and up to the top of the arm and then I need to run this down through the middle here down to be able to thread into the needle. So I can actually tie on the thread and pull that all the way through. This is how you access the bobbin. Pull this up just a little bit and then it spins. Come on. Oh, and it's gotta bring the needle up first. There we go, bring the foot up. Okay, now this lifts and spins. Sometimes the screw will stick out a little bit and it's just a little bit high. So I might uh, file that down, but it's pretty flush. And then we have access to our bobbin in here. So this I'll grab 
And we'll try to get this out. Let's see this little screwdriver that they sent along with it. Yeah, let's see. This guy. Let's back you up a little bit. There. Ah, that was nice. Turn this back and forth just a little bit. Came right out. All right, so this has just some basic thread in it, which I'm going to replace with some linen thread. It's kind of a cool thing that comes with the machine. This is the bobbin threader. You just spin this around, and then that rubber wheel runs on the edge of the crank, and you just take your bobbin, wedge it on the end, and then we can put the thread on here and wind that up. So I'm just double checking. This is how it came set up. So I'm looking at it to make sure I'm setting up the right way. And actually, you know what I'm gonna do before I take this out? I'm gonna draw a little diagram of this on my paper. There we go. Okay, you through there. Okay. Got our bobbins in, we're threaded, we can shut this door again. There's this little notch here. Just gonna put the string right in that notch and go ahead and close the door. Pull it out. We're good to go. Should be ready to sew. Oh, broke the needle. Okay, I think that's because the needle was a little bent and it was hitting this top. Fortunately, I had more needles. New needle in. That goes down. I've just been playing around trying to figure this out. We keep uh, threading the needle down in, which is supposed to pull the bobbin thread over and you pull it out. Well, every time I do that, it breaks the upper thread. So I, I took off the tensioning knob completely. It's still there, but I'm trying to loosen up the tension from the top spring as much as possible. Uh, and I also moved this uh, the thread bearing rod, which runs all the way down from the top down to the bottom to hold the thread and needle on. I moved that further down and I just don't think it was going far, far enough down for the bobbin to be able to grab the thread underneath and pull it around. Now, it seems like it's working right now. So we're gonna see if I can get this to work. This will be the very first try. Again, I'll try to catch it on camera. It's funny, I just, uh, I am used to sewing on a normal sewing machine, so as soon as I put that presser foot down, I went to move my right foot to press on the pedal. It's not a pedal, hand crank. All right, well, it worked a couple times, and then it stopped. We got a couple stitches. So, the thread broke again. Okay, well, we're getting there. All right, let's try with the black plastic fishing line stuff that came with the machine just to see if it actually works. We can turn this whole thing 
which is pretty sweet. And now I can walk this way. Walk this way. Oop. Put the foot back down. Then we can put the foot up. Turn her this way. And so, away from us. Whoop, foot back down. It does work, and our problem was really just the uh, just the type of thread we're using. So if you use the right thread, I'm sure messing with tension and stuff, we could also get it to work better. All right, guys. Well, I really like this machine for the price of it and for what it does. I'm really excited to try to fine tune it and get it, you know, get it set up and ready to be used for leather projects in the future. Really, the problem we ran into the most today was just getting the th right thread and using the right thread for this machine. So I ended up using just the black thread that came with it, and it did stitch. So I'm excited to kind of fine tune it and get some thread that'll work for leather um, and be able to use that for like leather sheaths and other leather projects in the future. Um, one of the videos I watched quite a bit to figure out how to thread this and set it all up was a video by Mainly Acres, and I'll put a link down below. So if you're interested to have all the step-by-step -step on how to thread this, get the bobbin set up and thread everything the right way, you can check out his video. So we hope you guys like this. Um, it was a fun little project. It was fun building the base and I'll have to build something else to hold all the little bits and bobs that come along with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is fun today. Um, make sure you don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram and go check us out on Patreon and also uh, listen to our new podcast on the Makery Network. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you on the next one.